Hi folks, uh, my name is Brendan Kennedy. I'm a congressional aide with the Office of Congressman Lloyd Doggett. Um, our office is downtown. If you know where the new Frost Bank Tower is starting to shoot up, we're right across the road from that. Um, I'm handing out little, little survey cards that got our office's information. Um, Congressman Doggett loves to hear everyone's opinions. We've got about half Macon Park, but he's always super receptive to folks who are in San Antonio, even out of district. If you've got issues with any sort of federal agencies, uh, we can certainly help you out with that. And then if you've got opinions you want to share uh, on any federal issues, certainly feel free to give us a call or just fill out one of those survey cards and send them out and we'd be happy to hear from you and happy to help with anything that you've got federally related, that's VA, Social Security, anything like that. Um, so I appreciate y'all's time. I know you've got a busy meeting ahead, so I'll get out of your way, but thank you so much for listening. She has it, got my email, got my phone number, give me a call, drop me a line. I'm more than happy to, uh, to meet with you. Uh, I get calls on a daily basis about all kinds of stuff. Um, for me, I, I tell everybody, I work for you. City San Antonio gives me the paycheck, but they get the money from you guys. <laughs> so I do work for you. Give me a holler. We have to help you out. Um, a couple of times at least in the last year to talk about a project 
that our department is working on called the Big Town Area Plan. And so, um, I'm back again tonight to speak a little bit, but really this time, uh, change it up and uh, ask that you spend most of the time doing the talking um, and sharing some ideas about uh, your preferences for the future of Maggie Park and Broadway Corridor. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about this area. The Midtown plan, it's a big picture plan. It covers areas all the way from Macy Park to Five Points and Fredericksburg Road and I-10. So it's a large area. Um, we're thinking big picture. Uh, we're thinking about the long-term future. You know, the next 10 to 20 years, the next generation, the next stage in our lives. So tonight, I'm going to speak for only about 10 more minutes. And then we're going to have group discussions at the table where you're sitting uh, for about 25 minutes. We're going to ask that you report out on your discussion to a larger group. Uh, and then we'll have about 15 minutes for me to just answer your questions and for us to talk as a larger group. So I'm going to give you instructions and everything you need to know to have a good conversation um, in a little bit as I go through this 10 minute introduction. Okay? So, um, the Midtown Area Plan will address land use, uh, parks, transportation, uh, amenities, and housing and economic development. All in a really big picture fashion. You know, who do we think we are that we can make a plan about all these topics for 20 years? It's going to be pretty general. That's how we do it. Um, Community engagement is really important. Um, understanding uh, local knowledge, the things that the community knows, uh, local preferences, uh, the ways that you think a plan will affect your lives in the future. We use a variety of tools to do that. A few of the most important ones are coming to meetings like this, uh, so that you don't have to come to a meeting that we put on. So we intersect you, so to speak. We also have a few of our other meetings where we ask people to come uh, for a couple of hours. And then we have an advisory planning team uh, made up of stakeholders and representatives from around that area, I showed you on the map. Um, and they meet uh, several times to give us uh, uh, input as well. So it takes about a year to make the plan. We start with understanding existing conditions, um, doing some visioning, thinking about what we care about fundamentally as a community. Uh, then we start working on a plan framework, thinking big picture about the future. Now it's time to start getting a little bit more specific and actually writing them down and mapping our recommendations uh, for the future. Uh, by May, we need to have a relatively final draft plan. Still a draft, it'll change after May. Uh, but, so the next two months are really important to get uh, more community input as we write the plan. And then for about three months this summer, we'll be doing more public meetings with the city council, uh, and planning commission, and ultimately asking for city council to adopt the plan. Um, and, and public comment and public input is welcome throughout the entire process. Um, it's most effective sooner and in the next couple of months. Um, so, um, as I said, we'll be putting draft, I didn't say this, we'll be putting draft plan sections online. There's already a couple of the, the, the earliest stage plan sections online. Um, I'll write this web page in larger print for you guys in a little bit. Uh, the draft plan in May, and then a three-month uh, adoption process where the plan will be further revised. So how can you, how can you participate at this meeting tonight? Um, you can participate by emailing me, by submitting comments online in response to the online draft plan content. Uh, and there's going to be another public meeting that we'll put on and invite people to come for two hours. And I can also come back to the Manky Park Neighborhood Association. I expect I probably will. I think it's a more matter of when um, you have time for me uh, rather than if I will come back. Um, so the plan, as I said, has several, uh, has several topics. And one of them is a section that's just about each neighborhood. So the section is just about Mankey Park, where the unique and local issues specific to Mankey Park that aren't the same in West Florida Alliance and Tobin Hill, where we can, we can talk about those assets, challenges, opportunities, and priorities for the future. 
so that's one of the things I want to talk with you about tonight and ask for your input on. Uh, we'll use this discussion to change the draft priorities that we wrote. We wrote those based on other conversations that I've had with Maple Park residents uh, at public meetings and coming to neighborhood association meetings. So it, it needs more work, that's why we're going to talk about it tonight. And then we'll post it online, and then you can comment on it more, and we can change it more. OK? Um, so asking if I want to restart the computer now or in 10 minutes. So let's say they gave me the option for four hours. Let's do that. Okay. Um, okay. So the draft priorities, and we certainly expect there's room for improvement here, would be to continue updating the neighborhood conservation district standards, which the neighborhood is working on right now, and improve um, the city's interpretation, implementation, and enforcement of the standards. Um, as more development happens on Broadway, um, try to leverage that to uh, make a more multimodal transportation system with better connections in and out of the neighborhood on those blocks uh, that immediately adjacent to Broadway. Um, uh, continue calling out that affordable housing is an issue in Mankey Park, um, but there, there is still affordable, relatively affordable housing here. But that it's it's threatened, and that um, the city needs to uh, allocate some resources to uh, help maintain that affordable housing, and to try to incorporate some new affordable housing and development as well. Um, prevent the demolition of buildings that contribute to neighborhood character um, is a topic that has come up time and again in the conversations. Uh, and finally, um, Banking Park has a very strong history of being involved in public decision making. Um, and uh, we've heard that the city can uh, improve in how it notifies the neighborhood of the decisions that it's making um, so that the neighborhood does have more time uh, and is more empowered to, affect, uh, empowered to affect those decisions. So those are the draft priorities. Um, Maybe we can improve them, maybe we can add to them. Maybe there's things that are actually more unique to make it part. Maybe these are true, but maybe they're not as unique as something else that, that we, can, we can discover together, okay? So the next thing we're gonna talk about in our discussion is future land use and the future land use plan. So future land use is a guide for future development. It's a, it's a tool to help the city make future decisions uh, about what kinds of things get built in the neighborhood and on Broadway. Uh, it's about the long term and about large scale gatherings. Um, it's not the zoning code, it's about specific design standards about what a building uh, facade should be made of. Um, it's not the neighborhood conservation district. It's it's much bigger picture. Here, yeah. so the land is so Yeah, it's like a precursor to zoning in some ways, the land use plan. Yeah. But it says you have to be bullet about zoning. It's not zoning. It's not a zoning code, but it's input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a heavy, it's a big input. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It's really important that it, when the zoning commission makes decisions about rezoning a property, they, they'll use the land use plan to help guide to help guide that decision. Will they relate? Uh, they're, well, they're, they're, they're required to by law. So they're supposed to. You know, they're supposed yeah. to, but I mean, I'm sitting here listening to all this, and I'm really kind of wondering: is it like if we, if if, it's, if the neighborhood really does this and participates, yeah, and people put all their effort and time into this, is this really like like is the city then really going to pay attention to everything? I'm here, I am here to pay attention and okay. to memorialize the conversation mm -hmm. afterwards in writing mm -hmm. and to take the feedback that you give me along with technical analysis and feedback that we get from many other places and, and write a plan with my colleagues. And that plan is supposed to be followed. Okay. So that's, and that's, the, that's the most... That's the post too. Yeah. And that's the, you know, that's the most that I can say. Plans 
Plans have been made in cities, including San Antonio, throughout history that have some things that get implemented and some things that don't. If you don't make a plan, then it certainly it wouldn't be implemented. So, there is some faith involved. And we have an hour that I'm asking for you to try to participate actively with us. And we also have a 15-minute Q&A after the activity that we really need to focus the questions and discussion into uh, for this large group. Otherwise, we won't get to, to the, the smaller group conversations. So the future land use map, so the future land use plan is made of three things. It's a map where we assign categories to places uh, in Midtown and in the neighborhood. It's different than zoning in one way in that, um, like I said, the patterns are bigger. We don't assign a category to each parcel, alternating one off, one off, for example, like a zoning map sometimes looks like. This is a whole neighborhood over by St. Anne's Church that has a single category assigned to it. And the corridor next to it, forever, forever, the same thing. The categories, there's about 22 of them, and they're used for the whole city. So what a challenge that we have to use 22 categories, not specific to Midtown, let alone Mankey Park, to try to make a plan for the future of this area. So how do we do that while honoring all of the unique qualities of a place like this? We do it by moving past the categories in the map and adding text and describing what do we need and what do we want for the future. It goes next to the map. So that's, that's a really important part of this plan. And that's part of the input that I want to get from the ultimate in our small group discussion. So we made a draft future land use map based on many prior plans, uh, based on values and principles that we've heard in community engagement over the last several months. Um, and this is it. This is the draft map. And like the neighborhood action strategies, the draft map is like a it's like a first pass. And and um, the one thing I know about it is that it, it has to be it will be improved, um, and that we need your help to do that. So in this first pass over the map, you can see that the corridors, like Fredericksburg Road, San Pedro, Main Street, McCullough, St. Mary's, and Broadway, they're all colored purple, and that means that it's a mixed use, sort of a mix of apartments, businesses, and the like, for example. Okay, that's the purple color. The lightest purple being the lightest and sort of least intense form of development. So that you can see on St. Mary's, McCullough, and Flores, right? And you see similarities in those places. It's smaller scale, smaller street. San Pedro and parts of South Broadway having the most intense development. The darker purple is only put on the map. So those are just a few examples. In Mankey Park, north of the neighborhood, we call it urban low density residential. And that includes anything in a mix from single family development um, up to uh, triplexes and potentially fourplexes. And based on the conversations I've had so far, that doesn't seem like just mapping that with that category, like that's okay. Like we need to add some text and, and put some boundaries on that description that I just gave you. So I'm hoping that our conversation tonight will do that. South of Lincoln Park. It's high density residential, and that's to reflect the existing uh, third, up to 33 units per acre zoning that's allowed uh, primarily in that area. So that's what we call high density. It's 33 units per acre is included in that. There too, I think we need to be more specific and, and say what we mean. Maybe we need to change the map as well. Okay, so that's that's why we're gonna that's why we're here. Okay, so I just uh, talked about this slide on the last slide. Um, okay, so today's discussion will influence the map, it will influence the text that goes with the map, um, and uh, I'll tell you right now, the discussion isn't actually going to be about the map. I'm not handing out maps for us to draw, to redraw boundaries and change the categories. We're going to talk about the principles that our department can use as we write the plan and change the map. You're also welcome to draw the map, and Turn those into me if you want, or you have to take a photo of your map when you're done. But for you to have a productive group conversation, 
I will ask that you put the map aside uh, for the group conversation for the most part and try to engage with the way this activity is structured. And so that's what I'm about to introduce. Okay. So for the neighborhood action strategies discussion, each person, each person has a piece of paper. Uh, the, part, the word part one at the top. And I will ask that you keep this at the table. If anybody is not at a table, please join the table. And now I'll invite our guest. Yeah. Master plan, uh, no commercial will be 
be on the first block from Broadway. Um, provide off-Broadway parking structures to help protect the residential streets and the character of the neighborhood as well as pedestrians. Um, so we've got some demolition notes, demolition of the original homes, limit development from being more dense than it currently is. Uh, demol demolition of buildings that contribute to neighborhood <coughs> culture um, should be a priority list stopping those demolitions. Um, we need improved bike lanes, um, the parking of the bike lane, traffic from the main roads going through nearest potential streets should be limited. Um, once again, respecting the major park master plan, conservation district and must be enforced. Uh, more notes about the pedestrian walkway across Broadway. Um, so we keep the buses out of the neighborhood, limit them to New Broncos and Hill Brand. So I would really like to see about I was it asked if it was important to leave 15 minutes for a question and answer at the end. And right now we're on track to have it in probably about 7 to 10. Mm -hmm. And that's probably a little too more time than, than everybody can take to do this. Okay. So we could try to okay. even short it up for them. All right. Just to be honest, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so for uh, number one, discussion part two, um the written sentence, I'm clear on sentence. Uh, no commercial operations beyond the top of or first of all off Broadway. We do not want to have a cluster of multi-family houses that will um, decrease uh, beautification efforts. Such a small land area, dense housing developments are intentionally limited. Our entire neighborhood is enclosed by some big multiple of these amenities we must reserve the current fabric. Um, number two, um, more high storage buildings allow to demol diminish the negative character. High prices should not be allowed to existing small lots. Duplex okay, triplex no, no, no. Uh, duplex limitation with enough off street parking to provide for the landowner. On to number three, new development is finally green. New development should support existing neighborhood character. Um, correctly live here because of existing qualities. We need to preserve the fabric. New development should match existing. Um, good idea, existing units and building maximum should inform new development. And then for number four, too many loopholes in the zoning code. Original zoning code is a loophole. Um, zoning code should, be, uh, code should be updated to current housing. Uh, once again, too broad of a statement. Um, basically, this just needs to comply with NCDs. A little tricky because we have two different areas. So number four. So, that's it. Thank you.
Which, that, that, that's uh, mine. Page 41. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh, okay. the, the neighborhood plan has, has some areas that it says to suggest sidewalks should be either constructed or reconstructed. Part of that's been done since the plan, but that should continue. Okay. Uh, item E should go uh, both ways. The neighborhood association should have a way to uh, better communicate their recommendations for public works, uh, public works projects. Uh, which projects does the neighborhood uh, prioritize? <coughs> parking system, uh, need a parking system, uh, shared public parking facilities. New housing uh, that is more in keeping with the neighborhood, uh, neighborhood's established development patterns, garages behind the houses. And finally, parking problems uh, restrict business parking on residential streets. <laughs> These are quick and short. Uh, number three. We agree with this.
currently single family living in the single family. Okay. And then I want to also say that I do not know if there is any other case for you to say like that. There will be more opportunities to comment on the app itself that will make more changes. We have a web page where you can actually click on specific locations and comment on those. And also be more general comments. Are you using that today? Yeah, but it doesn't, the map is not ready yet. So the web page. So before we do the QA, I just want to thank you very much for engaging in that conversation um, and, uh, and taking the time to do that and making the effort to listen and to share your thoughts. The web page is here, and I also wrote it down on a large piece of paper on the information bar over here, and there's more pieces of paper you can take home with information on. So with that being said, because we have to do a hard stop at 845. 845. About. As long as we start. Kind of hard. We can delay the uh, staff from leaving here. Yeah. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to you know, not tell you that, so you can write this down. So anyway, thanks a lot. And I'm here now to answer the question. Yes. In your presentation, you had mentioned that your plan is going to go to city council. Yes. The plan is going to have community input, but won't be voted on by the by the community. Only the input. Are you going to take your plan to the zoning board or zoning committee as well as council? We'll take the draft plan to a subcommittee of the city council called the Comprehensive Planning Committee. That's a few council members. We'll take it to the planning commission, and then we'll take it to the full city council. Now, we won't, before it's adopted, which we're hoping for it to be adopted in August by city council, we will not take it to zoning commission per se. Thereafter, however, zoning commission is supposed to use it if it's adopted to guide their decisions. Um, now, it's possible that our director is thinking about presenting the plan to the zoning commission beforehand and educating them on it, which would probably be a good idea. But they're not part of the adoption process to make it official. Okay. Any others? I'll tell you. Yes. Yeah. Um, the comment that we were making, I think the other two would be well, as well as about the growth of the parking. Um, it always struck me that you were wanting Broadway to redevelop and become more of a transway to develop a quarter. You've got to get it to move from a suburban design street, which is really what it is evolving from, uh, where everyone owns their own parking. And that's a key determination of suburban is that everyone owns their own parking. And to an urban street where there is a shared parking resource. Mm -hmm. and we have had that ongoing issue and it's still there with the museum owns their own parking and it's pulled over to other areas. Uh, Witty is on the park for, in terms of number of space they have to uh, And so there you have that. You really need to look at a system of public parking lots along Broadway so that you're not wanting each developer to build their own parking structure. Or if you do that, then you're only going to get mammoth development along Broadway. Because who can afford to do that? One large footprint development can do that. Mm -hmm. So if you're wanting that to happen, you have to go back and get the parking structures. And it, so you're in a quantity. So if I'm not mistaken, you took away the TERS for Broadway, right? The TERS, uh, the TERS boundary still includes Broadway. It's still in effect? But all the money's been spent. Yeah. OK. So the money and the resource to do that is you're in a quandary there, you know, if you don't want the parking to encroach and fill into the neighborhood, where the parking go? Or you have to have inefficient development of Broadway. Yeah, it's a difficult discussion. And especially when you add in the idea that um, you know you look out 20 years and parking demand might be quite different actually, depending on how technology is advanced. You don't know, right? But, should it, but like you talk about the, the city investing large sums of money in parking structures, and you have to think about the wisdom of that from a business perspective and, and investing public dollars in it. And we're still doing it, right? So we, we just did it in the bottom, and maybe we'll keep doing it. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. We're, we're not, and, 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 and
this worksheet with the first principle. Closest to a bad is like shopping at Parker Bus Stops. More housing than should be allowed in areas, uh, in areas close to the amount of traffic further away. So I've been thinking about, you know, we've heard a lot of conversation where some more development is probably appropriate on the blocks adjacent to Broadway. We've heard that a lot. Um, a lot of concern about new development inside the neighborhood. Um, and I was wondering about, like, you know, one to two blocks away from the Broadway. <coughs> and I think, based on the conversations I heard, I need to read the, read the responses, but it sounds like, no, there's a lot of uh, concern about any sort of higher density development, even like townhomes or duplex, triplex type redevelopment, even in existing buildings, if it's the same traditional looking house. Uh, even like on the second block in from Broadway, is what, I'm, is what I heard in that conversation. There are only yeah. four to five blocks. From, yeah, there are. Yeah. 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 But in some cases, you, you don't have one of the blocks, so yeah. I would be careful <laughs> using those terms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we live on the street that's a tenth of a mile away from the block. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I think the problem with that statement itself, because you, you want people in a, in, in a building that's using the park. Just because they're using the park, they don't have to live a block away. The people using the park can live across town. They don't have to live here to use that park. Like, it's, it's a small yeah, place. I hate the park. Don't think they're using the park. They don't think they're using the park on people that live in this neighborhood. People are using Breckenridge Park from all over the city. They don't have to live in this neighborhood. They don't have to use a park up here in because they live in this neighborhood. Whoever wants to use it, they're going to come. So don't think you have to have housing here because they want to, they want to use it here. They come here because that's what they want to go to. So don't think you have to have the building here for living. I have a question about where, where did these four items come from? They came from a lot of different conversations that we had yeah. across the city. In, in, in town over the last several months. But not necessarily in the park. Uh, uh, no, 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 they're, they're general principles, yeah. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's not necessarily people that live in the park. Sure. Okay. But some of them 